Namaste. So everyone knows the miracle of the butterfly coming out of the chrysalis. But what goes on in the chrysalis that turns the caterpillar, which is basically a glorified worm, into a beautiful butterfly that can actually fly in the air. That's the real miracle. We like to focus on the event of birth, but the transformation that happens in the chrysalis is the real miracle. Now, who can explain that? Similarly, in spiritual life, I mean, you knew this was coming, right? <laughs> in spiritual life, we like to focus on the event of enlightenment. Like, this is such a big deal, right? In fact, it's such a preoccupation that people even go to the lengths of pretending to have an enlightenment experience. Huh? I'm, I'm looking at Reddit and there's this uh, subreddit called Awakened. And there's all these people who are pretending to have an enlightenment experience, but none of them know what it is, so they always get it wrong. It's hilarious. And of course, they won't listen to any good instruction. So anyway, the real miracle occurs in the chrysalis. The emerging of the butterfly is just the final effect. The cause is hidden within the mystery of the chrysalis. So in spiritual life, the real transformation occurs in the stage of sadhana. The enlightenment experience and enlightenment itself are just the effects of the magic that happens in the mystery of sadhana. Now the thing about sadhana is it's kind of like a routine thing, you know? You get up in the morning, you take a bath, you chant your mantra, you do your puja, you study your scriptures, you know, day after day, week after week. <laughs> and sometimes it doesn't seem like anything is happening. Just like if you observe the butterfly's chrysalis from the outside, it doesn't seem like there's anything going on, you know? It just sits there on this branch or wherever it is. But then suddenly one day, poof, out comes the butterfly. <laughs> So there's so many points of similarity between the process of the butterfly and the spiritual process of enlightenment that it's a really wonderful metaphor or simile. Uh, it's a, a great way to express so many of the profound truths about the spiritual path. So for example, even though you're doing this routine every day, maybe for decades, there doesn't seem to be anything happening. And then all of a sudden, boom, you change states. You change your being. Now, is that change in being really the result of all that routine work going for years and years together? I don't think so. According to the scriptures, it's an act of divine grace. It cannot be something that we do because we don't have the power to do that. If we did, we would just become enlightened like that. Okay, I'm enlightened, boom. And you know, people want to ascribe that kind of power to themselves, but really we don't have it. Enlightenment is not something we can do. What we can do is the, the daily routine, you know, get up, take bath, chant mantra, etc. That's doable by a human being. But to change one's being, 
Uh, like from a, a caterpillar to a butterfly, like from an ordinary human being, a putujana, huh? <laughs> a pashu, uh, to an enlightened being, an arhant, or a siddha. That's not something that falls within our powers. So, what are we doing in sadhana, actually? Huh? We are simply preparing the way. We are simply uh, cleansing the disease of ego from the mind. I mean, the mind is the subtle body. Prana, the energy body, huh? the pranamaya kosha, then the mind, manomaya kosha, the intelligence, vijnana maya kosha, and finally, the bliss body, ananda maya kosha. Now, normally, we cannot perceive the bliss body because it's covered over by these other bodies. So, first of all, what we have to do is remove those coverings, cleanse those contaminations of the ego and wrong thinking and so on. I mean, it's from one point of view, which I kind of hesitate to discuss because it's so easy for people to abuse it. But from one point of view, nothing really changes in enlightenment. Only our point of view. But you see, when you change the point of view, you also change the background or the context. And when the context changes, the meaning of everything changes. And so the same experience in different states of consciousness has a different meaning, a different significance. This is the secret, you see. Now, some people will, will abuse this and say, well, then if I just start looking at things a different way, uh, and I'm enlightened. <laughs> That's not so, because we, we just discussed that enlightenment is actually not something you can do. Yeah, you can change your thoughts, you can change your mind, you can study the scriptures and build up a different context that gives a different meaning to the ordinary events of life. Those are things we can do. But the thing that changes our being is something that happens to us. It's divine grace, it's anugraha, a blessing. It's from the beyond. It's not a human action, it can't be. So this chrysalis period is like uh, when the butterfly is in the chrysalis. It doesn't seem like there's a lot going on. But what it is, is a slow changes over a long period of time. You see, enlightenment has no meaning if it's not preceded by sadhana. Well, some people will say, well, you know, Ramana Maharshi just got up one morning when he was 16 years old and boom, he was enlightened. Yeah, but what was he doing in his past lives? See? What kind of sadhana was he undergoing? Or was he maybe even an incarnation of Arunachala Shiva? So the exception proves the rule, okay? One out of a trillion beings born on this earth may have spontaneous enlightenment, and the rest of us have to work for it. We have to do the work to prepare ourselves to receive it. And that's the secret of the chrysalis. And I'll tell you what it feels like. You know, the time around the full moon is really always my favorite time because there's so much creative energy available, you know, and especially just a few days before and just a few days after full moon. Especially after full moon, when the moon is rising very late, I like to go to bed early 
and then get up around two o'clock when the moon is high in the sky. And this is a very powerful time because it's absolutely silent. Only crickets and frogs. <laughs> so this is the time when you can go deep. And in this time, the light that's coming from within is so strong. I mean, it's sometimes like overwhelming, you know, like when you go outside, if you've been inside in a dark room and then you go outside and the sun is out and it's like blinding, you know, it's like too much. You have to cover your eyes almost. It's hard to see anything. It's like that today, a brilliant sunny day out there. That when you uh, actually open up inside, then this light comes flooding from the Ananda Maya Kosha. It's always been there, but we couldn't see it because of all these coverings. Huh? Upadis. So because of Upadis, we think we're a limited individual stuck in a body, you know, crawling around on the surface of this planet. <laughs> acting like a fool, huh? like those stupid dogs fighting over nothing. And then what? Then we have to leave the body. And the process of leaving the body is mostly, for, for most of us, is very painful because of all our attachments, all our identifications. You know, we think the body is ourself. We think the things related to the body are ours. You know, we think that people in our lives belong to us. This is my friend, this is my parents or my family or whatever, you know, or even worse, my disciples, you know, spiritual ego and all that. And then we have to leave. But we should be looking at it in a different way. We should be looking at it that this body this material shell is like a chrysalis. And it seems like, you know, inert compared to the spiritual body. It's quite inert. And nothing much really changes about it for a long time. You know, like when you're growing up in the early part of life, it seems like changes happen all the time. But then when you're in the middle of life and you're more or less established and in control and all of that, it seems like things stay the same for a long time. And then again, towards the end of life, things start changing fast. But actually, <laughs> nothing much changes between birth and death. Only if we do sadhana. And that will change our consciousness to where we can see this body as a chrysalis. And what's going on is that we're changing on the inside more than on the outside by our work and by our puja and our sadhana and our offerings of charity and our offerings of love to God. And then at the end of this life, just like the butterfly comes out of the chrysalis, the subtle body escapes, huh? breaks open this gross body and then flies away to its next destination. Now, this actually happens in the case of an advanced yogi. My Adi Guru's 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 Guru witnessed a case where a man on his deathbed, when he finally left the body, the top of his head split open and the, the prana sharira, the energy body, emerged. And they could all see it. This was back in like 1850 or something like that. It was much more rare today, of course but it still can happen. And the other thing is, remember when you were young, really young, like two, three years old, 
and you used to look at adults and you could obviously see how phony they were. Huh? It was just so clear. Why can't they see? And then, of course, as we get older, we start getting attached to things and we start becoming phonies ourselves. <laughs> but the process of sadhana makes us again like a child. Again, our minds are open. Our vision is clear. And we can see how people are attached to the ego and how they build up this ego, which is not who they really are at all, and cover themselves with it uh, and present this ego to the world as if it's them. <laughs> it's ridiculous, you know. And I, I get this impression very strongly all the time when I'm out among people that everybody's got this, like, mask, you know, this, this ego, this false personality, and they present that to the world as, yes, this is who I am. Of course, the self-realized person <laughs> knows that this is a joke, this is nonsense. Who we really are can't even be described, can't even be conceived. What to speak of reduced to labels and tags and names and forms and stuff like that, you know. So the whole thing is ridiculous. <laughs> this accounts <laughs> for a lot of the, you know, that we see the sages always laughing. Huh? They're looking at the world and how ignorant and crazy people are that they think they have... Uh, this false personality, and that nobody else can see it. But guess what? The emperor has no clothes. <laughs> to one who can see. See, that's the meaning of that story, that the child can see the emperor has no clothes, but everybody else thinks, oh, they have to pretend. Let's stop pretending. Let's get out of the chrysalis and become butterflies. Aum Tatsa, Aum Shakti Aum.